What's going on everybody? I had to take some time before I make this video. You know, frustration had to set in. Frustration. I have never been so frustrated with an Alabama football team in my life. Not even in 2022 when we lost to Tennessee and LSU. Not even then. This version of Alabama football we looking at in 2024 got some real issues some real problems that need to get fixed will they get fixed in 2024 I don't know because guess what we continue to come on here week after week you got other fans saying hey it can be fixed it can be fixed well can it be because we're looking at the same thing week after week and I'm gonna I'm I'm go ahead and talk about what really bothers me and frustrates me, and that is the defensive side of the ball. The defense, yeah, we got some sacks. We, we got some tackles for loss and played on the other side of the ball. But that secondary is, is not physical. The secondary is not physical. I will say the front seven showed up in this game, but still they gave up some plays. But guess what? Every team gives up plays, so I'm not mad about that. I'm not mad about that. I'm mad at this secondary. I'm mad at the defensive play calling. Yes, I am. I will say again, Kane Womack need to get his shit together. I made a video apologizing to Pete Golden. Then I re recanted my apology. You know what I'm saying? It came to the defense of daggone, uh, of daggone uh, uh, Kane Womack on Coach Smook's show. Well, guess what? Sorry, like I said during the live, Coach Smoot. The scheme is a problem. Yeah. The players got something to do with it too. But it ain't all on the player. The scheme and the play calling has a lot to do with Alabama's defensive struggle. If you go back to last week, what happened? Third and 15 last week, third and 19 last week, they pick it up. Okay, they got third and nine this week. You come with that same damn defense, same damn defensive look, and your ass get beat for a 36-yard touchdown on third and nine. You brought pressure on second down, but you failed to bring pressure on third down. Once again, once again, South Carolina, fourth down, what they do, they convert. Now, yes, we was better on third down this week than last week. They were 7 of 15 on third down, 1 of 2 on fourth down. But still, when you giving up 36 yards on third and nine because you simply refuse to send pressure at the quarterback on a third down, hey, something wrong in the play calling. No doubt about it. This defense, this defense, Kane Womack's defense, Gave up what? Nine points in nine quarter in nine seconds. Then to go along with that, they give up what? Uh three more points. So they gave up 12 points in about mm, we'll say 15 seconds. It didn't take long at all. With two minutes, two two minutes left in the in the in the first half, you give up 12 freaking points points come on now tell me that it, it is all on the player no it's the scheme it's Kane Womack in his damn play calling but like I said the players got a lot to do with it too but hey it is what it is if you know you're weak on the damn back end how about dialing up some damn pressure come on now come on now and then Jalen DeMiro after he's we scored the first 14 points. He looked like a deer in the headlights into the fourth quarter. Come on now. No way in the hell you should be uh, taking a damn safety like that. Throw the freaking ball out of bounds. Or you had C.J. Dupree wide open over the damn middle. Damn shame. Damn shame. Damn shame. And then on top of that, you, you can't even jump on a freaking onside kick. Why did, did, did Kalen DeBoer call a timeout before the first onside kick? Come on, man. Are you freaking serious? 
Then you come out the timeout and can't even jump on the damn onside kick. You know what they're going to do. And then even after that, on the Hail Mary, Demonte Jackson get the interception and it carries him into the end zone. And he was about to down it in the end zone to give South Carolina a safety. Two points, which would have tied it up. Luckily, somebody was there to tell him to run that shit out. I mean, man, have third and long, what we do? Commit a damn penalty. Commit a penalty. Damn shame. Give them a first down. Matter of fact, not only a penalty, a fucking personal foul. What, what, I don't, I can't put my finger on it. I don't know what it is. What is it? Somebody put their finger on it and tell me what the hell it is with this Alabama Crimson Tide team. Is it the culture? Is it undisciplined? Or is it a combination? Because I don't know. I'm glad we got the win. But guess what? You can't, we can't even celebrate this win. We can't even be happy about this win. And I know some of these Alabama fans going to come over here. Oh, you this and you that. And they, I don't give a damn. I don't give a damn. You got your opinion. Let me have mine. And leave me the hell alone if you don't like my damn opinion. You know i go go to bat for my Alabama Crimson Tide any day. But I'm not finna sit here. And cover up the damn deficiencies. Not finna do it. You can support a team and critique them at the same damn time. And this Alabama team need critiquing. Now I will give them the praise for pulling out the win. Because an ugly win is better than a pretty loss. And you win at all costs. But guess what? I am one of those Alabama fans, and you're right that I ain't happy all the damn time. I ain't happy every time we get a win. Because guess what? We are struggling with inferior opponents. Vandy, North South Carolina have the kind of talent that Alabama have. But yet, we lose and we win in a damn struggle. And I ain't happy with it. I ain't happy. And if you're an Alabama fan, you got to be nervous week after week after these past two weeks. We ain't played sound fundamental football since the first half of the fourth game against the Georgia Bulldogs. This has been what? Two, six, ten quarters that... Alabama has played mediocre football, and luckily, they came out with the win today. I hate to even talk about going into Neyland Stadium, Knoxville, Tennessee next week. I hate to even think about it. I know Tennessee got their own problems, but shit, I don't think they got many as we do. I'm going to tell you that right now. But hey, it is what it is, and uh, hey, we just going to have to stop sugarcoat what our eyes is telling us. Come on now. And if you're an Alabama fan and you don't think that we should fall in the rankings after this showing, then you out your damn mind. It's wishful thinking. Wishful thinking. I mean, we got Tennessee coming up. We got Oklahoma coming up. We got LSU coming up. We got Auburn coming up. Come on, man. In the version of Alabama football that you've seen the second half against Georgia, the entire game against Vandy, and the entire game against South Carolina. In those teams I just named, Tennessee, matter of fact, I forgot Missouri, but Tennessee, Missouri, LSU, Oklahoma, and Auburn. Are you freaking serious? If you think this Alabama team, from what we've seen the last two and a half games, can go through that gauntlet without a loss or two, you fooling your damn self. That's all I'm going to tell you. You fooling yourself. But hey, 
we just going to have to accept the fact that this Alabama team, from what we've seen today, last week in the second half against Georgia, this Alabama team is not what we are used to. You just got to accept that. But if you want to keep sugarcoating it, then y'all Alabama fans go right ahead, sugarcoat it. I won't. I'm going to tell you the real truth. You can, you can call me a hater. You can call me a fair weather fan. You can call me what you want to call me. But I'm just spitting facts, baby. It is what it is. But I love my Alabama Crimson Tide. I'm going to support them through thick and thin. And guess what? I'm going to go to bat for them. But in saying that, I'm going to critique their ass too. When it's the coaches are calling mediocre plays and the players is playing mediocre football. And I'm going to leave it at that and roll damn tide.